All right. Good morning. Good evening, everyone, wherever you are. My name is Joey Lay. Uh, we're going to talk about a growth lever, a growth lever that you might be implementing in your business strategy. Um, but if not, we're going to talk to you and uh, educate some, about something called IT cost transformation. Now, simply put, uh, IT cost transformation is about strengthening. It's about strengthening the financial posture of your technology budget and taking that and investing in strategic initiatives. Primary goal that we, we want to, to achieve is to better serve your customers and help you differentiate in the market. Here's our agenda today. We're gonna cover uh, a variety of topics of how, how we see IT cost transformation. First off, we're gonna cover examples of reduction activities that you're, you're likely implementing today. Uh, but also talk about cost transformation activities to consider. We're gonna get more prescriptive on our recommended approach, uh, our process of how we help our customers achieve strategic IT cost transformation. We're also gonna be talking about technology investments and trends that our customers have, um, have told us about that they want to implement and help them achieve scale growth in the new normal. We'll explain practical short-term benefits and long-term benefits so that you can realize value along the way in, in your investment journey. And then we're gonna, lastly, we're gonna talk about a synoptic case study, uh, how we implemented IT cost transformation in one of our uh, strategic customers. Uh, so again, my name is Joey Lay. I'm the director of the service management team here at Synoptic. Um, my background is over a decade of experience in enterprise IT. Uh, I've worked at companies like IBM in their enterprise uh, content management solutions. I worked at EMC and Dell EMC in their core IT and storage portfolio. Um, I've held a variety of roles in product, in software engineering, in product management. Most recently, I'm here at Synoptic heading up the IT service management team. My primary responsibility is to develop a service portfolio that helps you uh, sustain growth. Uh, our aim is to be the strategic technology partner for each of our customers. Uh, this goes through a set of consulting, advisory, uh, professional services, managed services, and st strategic client advisory to help take you through a, a very uh, systematic and planned technology roadmap. Uh, so what is IT cost transformation? Uh, very simply put, uh, as it sounds, it's about reducing costs. And we know that many of us have to take on th these activities every once in a while. Um, it's about reducing costs in underperforming areas. It's about reducing costs that in areas that are not predicted to grow in the future. You know, while we do not prefer or expect to be in this place with any of our businesses, every technology has a life cycle. And at some point, we're going to be facing that decision, that, that business case, to evaluate the current investments that we've made. And, and we may be forced to take uh, necessary cost reduction measures, such as renegotiating the vendor contracts rationalizing the technology that we have in place. And even the decision to maybe consolidate or decommission technologies that are just no longer serving business needs. Now we know that some of you are likely engaged in these activities. I'd like to actually do a quick poll to get a pulse on uh, where, where we're at in our, in our technology life cycles and identify you know, what is the primary objective of your cost reduction efforts. Just give it a minute while people are taking and answering the, the poll. So it looks like the answers coming in are a um, number of you are looking to invest in strategic initiatives. And that's great. Uh, that, that's actually the focus of our topic. Um, strategic cost transformation, you know, as it sounds, is actually a set of uh, highly, um, comp it re it's strategic activities designed to identify levers for growth. And you know, we, we give caution to organizations who find themselves spending most of their time 
on simply just cost reduction activities because inherently doing those activities alone, while it will strengthen your financial posture, won't necessarily grow your business. Uh, growth uh, requires a hard look at what are your value streams. You know, where do you, where do you, where what activities are going to increase value for your customers or, or even your company uh, internally? Um, th these activities uh, to do cost reduction, we see them as a means to an end. It's a key lever to fund transformation initi initiatives. And by reinvesting these savings in new technology initiatives, you'll be more primed for growth activity. And to get there, here's what we what we recommend. Identify, again, what are the main value streams for the companies, the key activities that drive value for your customers. This could be your customer success team. It could be actually your sales operations teams. It could be your delivery team members or even the product uh, development DevOps team who are actually ingesting and understanding the behaviors of, of how your customers use your products. Key in, in each of these efforts is a strategic technology roadmap and planning out and prioritizing the rollout of technologies that are actually going to um, better position you for the business outcome you want to achieve. So is this a leapfrogging competition? Is this just an incremental uh, growing the current customer base and actually just meeting their uh, daily expectations? Whatever it may be, it's important to have that roadmap planned out and, and measuring against uh, your business objectives and what we call a technical business review. How are these technologies actually serving business outcomes? So here at Synoptic, we've developed a process and plan for each of our customers uh, in, in really helping them achieving uh, high, high levels of growth. And this often starts by envisioning the end state business objective and developing that business plan to get there. Um, many of our customers will start with a consulting initiative, maybe just an, a technology assessment of, of what they've already got in place. Um, but the key objective for us is really just to understand your business model, um, how you plan to uh, want to add value to your customers and investments you've considered uh, to help get there. Um, during the transformation stage, we do a formal assessment of the ecosystem that you have, your, your technology stack, your application stack, your cloud stack, uh, and your, your software and hardware solutions. Um, usually through this, this, uh, this assessment of technologies, we will identify different transformation opportunities to accelerate growth. Um, and as customers implement and, and we help them implement those technologies, we move them to an evolution cycle, um, a, a strategic technology management program and strategic advisory process to help uh, these technologies evolve along a maturity model that makes uh, that takes IT from being a cost center to a strategic asset. Uh, so here's the framework uh, that we, we employ in our customer base. How we deliver force multiplier for growth is primarily through three major milestones. Uh, we talked about cost reduction a little bit. As I stated before, it's necessary. It's completely necessary to strengthen the financial posture. And what you can expect in, in during this process is to eliminate or plan for retirement of, of technologies that are not driving positive customer outcomes. You can expect to have to rationalize the current investments that have been made, the length of that investment that, that remains on, on the contracts, for example. And, and sometimes we can actually just initiate a renegotiation of the existing contract before, before it expires. Um, so we, we would take a look at the vendor's uh, relationships that you have we might suggest um, you know, getting into a relationship with different vendors that have more advantageous pricing models that might scale as you grow. Um, and, and as we emerge from the cost reduction stage with a stronger financial budget, we, we look to make structured improvements day to day uh, in, in an activity that's known as cost optimization. Cost optimization is simply maximizing the use of the money you have on the current investments that you make. And so we, we make cost optimization for our customers, for example, through our managed services. Um, in the long run, the optimization happens through a series of road strategic roadmap investments. Uh, and so how we plan our customers to take them through that journey is, is what's called a technical business review. Um, each of our customers, uh, managed customers, are paired up with a client advisor. Uh, this client advisor, understands your business model, understands the objectives that you're trying to achieve, and is planning your technology roadmap. So they work with you to identify those areas of optimization, uh, whether it's IT infrastructure, 
or workforce productivity services, or even cloud services. Um, at times, we will be recommending shifting spend from a declining unit to another that's expected to grow. Um, the last stage, uh, and lastly, Synoptic has, ha has had the pleasure of recognizing a handful of customers as strategic partners uh, in which we drive mutual success through our consulting practice. The consulting practice governs the entire life cycle that we outlined in, in the last slide of envisioning solutions for customers, um, building business plans to transform their technology stacks, and also a technology management plan to help evolve and mature those technologies along its, uh, along its life cycle. Um, they also govern the entire service portfolio. They're responsible for creating the business plans needed to realize value. And, and for those who have entrusted us with planning their strategic roadmap, um, they have an augmented business review where we, we typically review the business metrics, alignment to outcomes, alignment to the technologies that serve uh, those business objectives, and um, work, work on co-joined plans, uh, co what we call co-innovation plans, to develop and mature the technology stack further. So we talked. So we talked about these three um, three major milestones in realizing strategic cost transformation. The final one is where we all want to be, uh, which is realizing growth. Um, the growth stage is about a measurement against business objectives. If we have the opportunity to partner with you, you'll be paired up with multiple layers of our organization. Um, who will be under, who will be working to understand your business model and implement uh, what we call a, a governance partnership model. At the bottom, uh, our project teams will be generally discussing day-to-day -day challenges with you. And this, this is very operational uh, down on the floor uh, where IT lives or in the cloud. Um, and our operational teams will, will typically be communicating uh, the project plans, the schedule, the roadmap, and the delivery timelines uh, with uh, with your your program management teams, you'll also be able to interface with our executives, our CISOs, our CEO, our CIO, and our CTOs to conduct monthly technical business reviews. This is where we would typically talk about strategic cost transformation and investments that we're considering to to make to help propel our growth. By now, you might be thinking, okay, tell me about investments that we should be considering. Tell me about investments that we could be making. Um, we've, we've done a variety of roundtables during this pandemic. It's a very difficult time um, for a lot of us. Uh, we faced downturns in some business operations. We've, we actually faced growth opportunities. Uh, some of our customers have actually had growth opportunities uh, in, the, in the places you might not even expect. Either way, there are a variety of prescriptive uh, trends that we see across our base that we think you should consider taking the savings from cost reduction and applying them to transformative initiatives. Uh, the first one is, is simplifying the business process and business infrastructure applications that you have in your technology stack. Um, rationalize the, one, the applications that are no longer in use, because this can be the most distracting area for a lot of our workforce. Uh, so these, uh, these apps are the ERP systems, the CRM systems, HR systems, the finance applications. Many of these may be legacy and they might be hosted on premise and hard to actually connect to, especially in a remote workforce environment. Um, a lot of our customers are, are considering moves into the mega SaaS platforms. So we, we service Microsoft Dynamics 365, um, Salesforce and the Oracle clouds. And uh, a lot of the transformation projects that have come out of this have been uh, migrations of the, of the current architectures and platforms into these new SaaS platforms. And we're doing a lot of simplification along the way, removing um, elements and integrations with third party software that are just no longer you know, needed. So what, what comes in, in the result of that is simply a, a much more streamlined um, application where we can actually be productive with it. The second major trend is not surprisingly is on the cloud infrastructure front. Um, many IT infrastructure investments that are hosted on premise, um, we may be not right sized given the new demands or uh, against, it may not be as flexible for a new product development initiative that we're investing into. Um, not surprisingly, uh, a lot of our customers have consolidated. They've consolidated their IT and right sized them into a cloud model. 
Now, a lot of people talk about cloud as a place. We actually view cloud as more of an operational model. It's an operating model that allows you to invest in IT without overspending. And so cost optimization is much more prevalent in, in a cloud model because the in a managed operation, the cloud spend will be matched against the exact demands or roughly the exact demands with some buffer, of course, for, um, for burst workloads to, to account and match the, the demand of, of IT coming in. That way, the, there's no overspend, uh, and we're actually within our, our maximum you know, utilization of the funds that we're expending. The second major area is talking about digital experiences, and I want to explain that a little bit. A digital experience is something you can achieve for your customers or your workforce entirely through technologies. And this, is, this, is, this trend has actually been accelerated as because of the pandemic. Um, a lot of, for example, collaborative technologies like Zoom, WebEx, Bright Talk here that we're speaking on, Ring Central, Teams, Slack, a lot of those have seen a, a huge uptick in growth because that is the primary means to communicate uh, with one another remotely. And the, the new normal has meant working from home for a lot of us. So these digital experiences may not have been implemented prior to the pandemic, but certainly you, you guys are now um, using digital technologies. But what you might have not considered is, have you considered this type of experience for your customers? Um, so this could mean a new type of service, a new type of product, um, a new revenue stream that is entirely digital. Um, how we've seen um, taking, for example, even our marketing efforts completely digital is that we've actually been able to reach more customers as a result of it. Um, it's, it's more flexible. It's been easier to achieve engagement um, in a remote channel, which surprisingly, um, some might have think it would have been harder, um, but actually technology is actually enabling a simpler connection to our, our customer base and, and even one another in our workforce. So we've actually uh, prioritized service solutions to augment um, what we call workforce productivity. Um, we, there's a service we, we deliver called real-time communications that gives a carrier grade voice network um, that can be attached to any of the collaborative platforms like Salesforce, like um, Teams. And you can have basically carrier grade voice through uh, the Teams platform. Um, but the second approach is uh, product, de product development. Um, we've seen new uh, digital products being strategically positioned in the market. So uh, a traditional retail store has, has definitely uh, kick-started uh, and actually augmented their e-commerce platform to become the main driver of revenue in some cases. Um, other companies are using apps to connect with, uh, that clinicians are using, of course, applications to better serve their patients, right? Because, you know, we can't necessarily have a face-to-face -face in, in every situation. Um, we've developed applications that actually help clinicians now speak to their clients over mobile applications. Now the third investment is for your business. It's once you've identified, you know, we've we've got technologies to invest into. We need to actually measure and see it's performing for us. And so the the final recommendation we have is to streamline business processes. This is largely automation uh, of repetitive tasks, and to invest in real time cost insights. Um, business processes can be predictable, or they can be machine learned. And the right application of automation or machine learning uh, can help create predictive models that will help reduce the overhead required to scale growth. Overhead, uh, we speak to is largely a combination of people, uh, the technologies, of course, and the IT resources. And uh, by leveraging some of these predictive models, you'll be able to actually assess how much you need to invest if we have the right um, AI model and data stream. Uh, and if you find that in your business model and your in your core value streams that you need to hire people to sustain growth, uh, it's time to actually start looking at business process automation. Um, on the data insights front, you've probably heard that data is the next gold or the next oil, and and that's true. Data is growing in business value and importance. But what what's important to consider is if data is only being treated as a commodity, meaning it's being stored and never analyzed, it actually doesn't add that business value, right? Data is only useful if it's actionable. And to, to make data actionable, 
the investment to consider is one in business intelligence. To, de to derive and visualize these insights coming out of the data and, and ultimately making it uh, actionable. Uh, now we wanna talk about, uh, we had the pleasure of working with one such customer to help them provide better patient outcomes. Um, they're a smaller, re more regional healthcare boutique. Uh, they specialize in a certain type of care um, distributed across Southern California. And they had a, uh, one of their key value streams is really just very simple. It's just understanding what patients need. And their primary means to actually figure out and get insights from what they need is just listening to their customers. Um, but for a business leader, it actually meant needing to collate that data, collect that feedback, and actually put it in a single place where they can analyze and aggregate all the feedback. And the method they were using is was uh, a bit outdated. Uh, a lot of manual data collection processes through Excel spreadsheets, aggregation of this data in the headquarters, not necessarily visible to all clinicians. Um, when we started in, in talking with the customer about, you know, what are they trying to accomplish? Ultimately, they want to improve patient outcomes. We recommended streamlining, right? simplifying the the, um, the process that they were they were doing, and actually implementing a business intelligence system that would help them gather and store this data in a central in a in a cloud repository, so that all their clinicians have availability to this data and can actually make their own decisions based on their you know their region's specific needs. Um, what we implemented for them was an Azure Cloud uh, data warehouse solution to store that data centrally. And on top of that, building Power BI, um, business intelligence reports and dashboards to help derive and surface those insights. Now by itself, um, now that we, ha we had the data in place to um, surface and bubble up things that they should be considering, um, those clinicians were fairly taxed with their day-to-day -day activities. They don't necessarily had had enough time to um, actually look at the data and understand the insights that the system, that the BI dashboards were presenting. So we also engaged in, 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 in a number of optimizations necessary to reduce their overall workforce's productivity, uh, sorry, improve their workforce's productivity. Um, so this came with addressing some of the network challenges that they were facing, just communicating with each other, um, also uh, replacing their desktops and, and laptops to actually uh, be more uh, performant for their daily needs, and also just right-sizing their support structure. Um, you know, if they are spending a lot of time speaking with a variety of support technicians, they're ultimately not servicing patients, and they're not researching and trying to identify better ways to actually meet their needs. Um, this was implemented across a technology roadmap uh, where we advised them, you know, the, the time, the right time and place to invest and, and push these uh, transformation initiatives. And, and for the year, uh, we achieved great results. We were to, able to help them uh, free up clinician time. They were able to identify new revenue streams and new patient care services. And this helped them actually grew, grow a, a revenue lift of two and a half million in the first year. Um, we're now like looking to take this uh, in, a, in a more uh, aggressive stance and seeing what other opportunities um, we, we, can, we can use to uh, further propel their growth. So a little bit about Synoptic. Um, we, we are a global systems integrator, uh, managed IT services provider. Typically, uh, 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 we typically get contacted to um, become the strategic partner for customers. Um, we're often having conversations about transformation and we, t we partner with, uh, with organizations worldwide to help them navigate that ever-changing technology landscape. Um, the most important uh, value that we offer is to build a solid foundation for technology for your business and to build that strategic roadmap um, for not only strengthening your financial posture, but also um, strengthening the value coming out of IT and other technology solutions. Our service portfolio is intentionally expansive. Uh, a variety of different technology needs from cloud services to protecting against cyber threats, to simplifying the business infrastructure, to developing BI solutions, and actually developing custom products. Um, all of these services are integrated to, to really service those, those core business outcomes. And we find ourselves needing to tap into different areas of service 
to meet the business objectives. It's not enough simply to manage IT in order to hit a business objective. So we've intentionally invested in more application level uh, technologies because we find that our, our, the way our technology is evolving, more value is being derived, uh, more, more value is connected to um, the business applications and, and the products that we're developing on top of IT um, uh, as it connects to how you want to grow. We've been proudly serving our customers since 2001 to help partnership in, with them and help them realize their vision. And I'd like to thank you guys for the time and close out with a Q&A. Thank you. All right. We have a couple of questions here. Let me just read these off. How is cost optimization different from cost transformation? Um, so the, the these are often confused. Um, so so cost reduction, as we talked about, is reducing, and that's pretty straightforward. Cost optimization is about maximizing the use of the investments that you that you've already made, and actually maximizing the dollar uh, output of, of each investment that you've already made. Cost transformation is what, what we view as the entire process. You need to reduce in areas that are underperformed. You need to optimize what you've already invested. And the transformation aspect comes from taking the, the savings and the, you know, the additional budget to fund initiatives that are going to help you leapfrog your competition, to help you differentiate in the market. And that's an intentionally um, strategic activity again to look at your customer of core value streams and how how you add value for your customers. Um, the second question I see here is um, how can we engage Synoptic for IT assessment and cost transformation uh, exercises? Um, Many of our customers are in different life stages of their business. You know, they don't always start with, I have an initiative and I need to implement it. Um, a, lot, a lot of customers actually come to us having already started their initiatives and then finding they need help. They need help in implementing, um, they need help in stabilizing, um, they might be overrun on their cost, on their budget. Um, that is the most common scenario where we uh, typically get contacted um, for, an, for an IT services engagement. So uh, the, the, usually the first step is we, will, we would stabilize a customer's operation and that puts them in that stronger position uh, with lower IT risk. Uh, and ultimately um, we, we would start optimizing from the get-go to make sure that, hey, we actually have a budget to in, invest in transformation exercises. Um, so, so by immediately adding value for our customers by stabilizing them, we, we, we typically, start to talk to them about their business outcomes, you know, what they're trying to hope, hoping they were, what they were trying to originally achieve. And cost transformation ends up becoming uh, a, a more down the line activity. Um, it is important for us to understand your business model in order to make an impact uh, to your objectives. So how we view it is not just an immediate, you know, project that we would um, reduce costs. That's part of it, but we look at it as a long-term relationship, a partnership in other words. Okay, um, are there any other questions that I can answer for folks? Yeah, I think we missed a poll. Uh, I missed the poll question, but you know, we, we do wanna get to know what you guys are considering investing into. So some of those trends that we talked about um, a, a little bit in the middle of the presentation uh, those are those are those are the trends that our customers are are approaching us with. I, we'd like to hear if you guys see the same um, the same needs. And uh, we do have a poll actually um, that sh that brings back those examples. Uh, can we bring that poll up? 
Okay. Uh, so you should see this on the screen now. Um, how many of you are investing in any of these initiatives? Okay, I see you coming in here. So the most popular seems to be building digital experiences. And this is not surprising. Uh, with the pandemic, uh, this has been an immediate need for, for, for many of us, for all of us, most likely. Um, we do see this trend continuing, uh, even as the call to come back to work uh, is eventually had. It, it's, it's the reason we see the digital experiences uh, continuing uh, is, is that it's, it is an easier, more flexible way to engage our, our customer audiences. Um, some of the largest companies in the world, the technology startups, large enterprises, AWS, you know, um, today Coinbase is going public. They're a cryptocurrency, uh, which primarily services customers to purchase cryptocurrency through digital. Um, and, and that's an entirely digital revenue stream. Not surprisingly, these are some of the largest companies in the world because of their ability to reach markets that have historically not been reachable. Um, so, so we highly recommend considering those digital business models because it, it just expands your your reach into customers, uh, you know, in exponentially. Some of you actually commented actually you're, you're considering all of these. Uh, that's great to hear um, because we we need to see. Um, an investment in a variety of areas. It's not gonna be a silver bullet in transformation. Um, it's largely going to be dependent on what you're trying to accomplish. And so we, we don't like to pitch technologies, we like to pitch outcomes. And this starts really just by understanding your business model again, what you're trying to accomplish and working backwards to what is the technology investment that makes sense. By doing that approach, we, we know that the, the initiatives that we take on are purposeful. So cost reduction taken by itself, you know, it, it might improve bottom line, um, but we take it as an intentional step in if we need to invest in a BI platform, for example, that and, and that way the reductions are not only justified, they're they're purposeful and, and they're not just taken, um, you know, sort of randomly. Um, so it's, it's good to hear that many of you are thinking about all of these things. We, we do see this uh, as an important uh, trend across. These trends are, are very important for a lot of our customers. And uh, again, we're, we're, we're happy to just, just talk, talk about how we can help, um, how we can partner to achieving your, your outcomes. Um, so if there are not any more questions, um, I'd like to just close out. And again, thank you for the time. And um, uh, we'll. We'll hopefully be talking to some of you soon.